Holcomb has almost become a kind of an alter ego. It is attached to a very big passion of mine, which really at its root is music, more specifically music from a hundred years ago, you know, from the 20s, 30s and 40s and 50s. Holcomb was a way to share the music, to take it from the basement and be able to play it for people, to share it with people, to play it loudly, turn up the volume. And so it made all the sense in the world to, to DJ these old records. And uh, I quickly realized that it was hard work because they're heavy, they're very fragile. That was part of what I wanted to offer too because nobody else does it. Nobody else in Canada, I think, DJs 78s. So I felt I really had a, a, something special to offer. I am also a painter, a sculptor, uh, a leathersmith, and uh, I keep myself busy. I love using my hands. I love using my creativity. It's sort of like a bottomless pit of wanting to learn. Like I just want to learn new stuff all the time. I guess that's why I have five jobs. It's it's the fact that I want to learn something new, and more and more so as I get older. Stay diversified. Something about the old records that, uh, it, it's like a nostalgia that's not mine, but definitely there's something that I'm attached to. You know, the old surface noise. I guess it's my way also of learning history, you know, through the music. If I care about it, if there's passion involved, then I want to know more and it allows me to dig deeper. I think for the 78s, it's, you know, they really are little time machines in the sense that it's a first generation. It's the recording straight from either an acoustical recording, which would have been recorded through horn, straight to wax and cut. And this is what's in these shelves, you know, like they're first generation recordings. In other words, they are not compressed. They're the opposite of digital recordings. Even vinyl recordings that we find in the, in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, and 90s are compressed. 78s aren't. It's the only uh, music source that's uncompressed. So they really do come alive. Yeah, they, and uh, it's about the closest you can be to a, a Blind Lemon Jefferson or a Doc Boggs playing his banjo in the 20s. the old analog gear, the tube amps, the British gear. Uh, I've de I definitely very quickly uh, developed a love for that kind of stuff. And so, you know, the wind-up gramophones and the Edison cylinder machines, it's, it's kind of an extension of that. It's just like a little bit deeper, a little bit further into history, but looking for uh, music, quality music-making machines. Yeah, and mechanical. How wonderful is that? You don't need electricity for this stuff. And a full crank would give you enough, would wind the spring enough to play the whole record. You release the brake. Fresh needle, nice sharp needle on. I found a box at a garage sale in Chelsea with a Victrola, like a wind-up gramophone machine. And uh, I had to have it. I had to have it. I was the, unbelievably the first one at the garage sale, early morning. It was for a steal, you know, it was a hundred bucks for a box of records, the gramophone. So uh, I jumped on it, brought it home. That very same night, I was at a party where it was in the country outdoors and I brought it along. I had it in the back seat, so it was wonderful. I was able to wind up some records and uh, play them by the campfire. And I noticed how much everybody loved it. 
sculpting is is big in my life these days. Uh, land art, sculpting in nature, especially in the winter with ice and snow. It gives me something different than the music. It's also got a lot of lessons to teach. That's the one thing about land art, different from from say painting. Painting has a more is is more permanent. You can tackle painting in different ways, but the end product is something that will survive, you know, in most cases. The land art is a whole other expression, and it's more, for me, tied to letting go. The, the practice of letting go is a wonderful way to know that uh, every moment's fleeting, you know, that everything is ever-changing. And so to work on ephemeral pieces, ice, you know, the next day, there's no guarantee that that's still there, weather permitting. You know, the sun plays a big part. The wind plays a big part in all these pieces. That's part of what I, I love about it and a part of the lessons that I'm learning. You can feel from impermanent things. It hits home when it comes to that nothing, nothing lasts forever. And these records, you know, they, they're not going to follow me. Uh, so, uh, while I have them, I play them. (laughs) ¶¶ 